follows, and I quote, one, the people have delegated their sovereignty of judicial power to only the judiciary and the independent tribunals established under the Constitution. Two, only Parliament can establish a subordinate court or an independent tribunal through an act of Parliament. Three, only Parliament can determine the jurisdiction and functions of a court or independent tribunal. Four, it is also now the law as determined by our courts that only the Judicial Service Commission can determine who would be employed to serve in such a tribunal. Five, indeed, Section 13 of the Commissions of Inquiry Act is very clear that an inquiry shall be de deemed to be a judicial proceeding. This makes it an, an absolute preserve of the judiciary under our Constitution. A president, unlike the past, no longer has power to make any decision on the Constitution of a court or an independent tribunal, nor who sits in judgment in such a court or independent tribunal. Yet again, Mr. Ruto is trying to undermine and overthrow the Constitution. We wish to state as follows. One, in the matter of Shakahola and the growth of cult activities in the nation, Mr. Ruto is as much a suspect as is all the cult pastors from Shakahola and beyond. He owes the people of Kenya an explanation before he purposed to be trying to solve the problem. Two, the so-called pastors are the people who set up the so-called sanctuary at Ruto's former official residence in Karen as the deputy president. They did not stop there. These so-called pastors proceeded to deliver prophecies and promise miracles about how Ruto would perform as a president. Three, these cultic pastors were among the people who supposedly sanctified State House when Ruto arrived there, pretending to be holier than, than every other Kenyan. They proceeded to pro prophesy how great his regime would be. Four, these so-called pastors have organized mega prayer rallies attended by so-called prayer warriors that include Mr. Ruto, Mr. Rigadi Gachagua, and their spouses, supposedly to sanctify the land. They ended up defiling the land. Five, these so-called pastors aided the introduction of mandatory fasting that started in 2015 at the DP's residence in Karen, and which have been carried over to State House, where everyone is compelled to fast every Wednesday, regardless of their faith, effectively making State House essentially a Shakahola annex. Six, sometime in May 2022, Mr. Ruto's family claimed to have prayed for impure borehole water at their current residence and turned it into clean when a purification machine had failed. We see no difference between this claim and the outrageous ones made by cut pastors like performing fake miracles and extorting money from believers with the calls like Tumambegu 
ya mia tatu kumi or first until you meet Christ. Seven, the cult leaders are behind the decision by Ruto to establish a faith diplomacy office where he has gone ahead to provide a list of 100 members to be recruited in the Public Service Commission as intercessors supposedly to pray for counties and the government. Nobody knows the identity, the qualifications of the so-called intercessors, how they were identified and where they, they fit in a government where religion and state are separate entities. Eight, Ruto is the leader of the cult movement disguised as Christianity in Kenya. Ruto, Gachagua, and their families must tell Kenyans when and how they knew these cult leaders and what they knew about them. Nine, Ruto and Gachagua must tell Kenyans how much these so-called pastors contributed to their 2022 campaign. How many times have the so-called pastors accessed a state house since the start of this regime? 10. As we stated at the start, Ruto must know he has no powers to appoint a judicial commission of inquiry. So that option is out. 11. We are all aware that judicial commissions of inquiry have been the tool of choice whenever the government has something to hide, like you believe Ruto does now. 12. Parliament must swing into action, come up with a select committee, and get to the roots of the cultic activities in the country and the abuse of religion for political gain. 13. Parliament must help us establish whether the deaths at Shakahola were acts of rogue pastors, human sacrifices, or body organ trade, and who the beneficiaries were. 14. The DCI may have swung into action late, but since they did, they have been doing a great job in Chakahola. They should be allowed to do their job without inter inter interference. 15. The current blanket restrictions placed on independent observers, including the media and civil society, must be lifted forthwith. 16. The state must give the media full access to the scene of crime and various aspects of the investigations. 17. Going forward, Ruto must commit to draw a clear line between religion and state in this country. He has deliberately merged the two to enable his political survival and as the cover up for his corruption. 18. Each on Shakahola, Ruto is as guilty as those he is seeking to investigate. I repeat, he is as guilty as those he is seeking to investigate. 
the blood of those children who starved to death crying for a spoon of water is in Ruto's hands. On our planned protest rallies, we confirm that they are on tomorrow. Beginning 6 a.m. on the 2nd of May 2023. As we stated yesterday, the Constitution of Kenya, which in Article 37 provides that every person has the right peacefully and unarmed to assemble, to demonstrate, to picket, and to present petitions to public authorities. That has not been suspended. I repeat again, every person has the right peaceably and unarmed to assemble, to demonstrate, to picket and to present petitions to public authorities. That provision has not been suspended. And our demonstrators tomorrow have been informed, and I repeat here, that tomorrow's demonstrations are going to be peaceful. Nobody should be allowed to carry any weapon. And nobody should try to interfere with anybody's private business. We are basically demonstrating to present our petitions to respective authorities. Police cannot decide in advance that there shall be violence, then proceed to ban political activities that are protected by the Constitution. That is the making of a dictatorship. It amounts to a suspension of the Constitution. We will resist. We will resist. As we said yesterday, we shall present a petition to the IBC, the Office of the President, the National Treasury, and the Public Service Commission. We repeat for the only violence and destruction of property that have taken place during our activities are when the police invade our marches and when Gachagwas hired goons to invade the Kenyatta family farm and stole sheep and cut down trees. Mr. Gachagwa and Mr. Kamau Echongwa are themselves turned charged with sending goons to go and invade a, a farm and also a business premises and no action has been taken by these police officers against them. It is instructive that to date nobody has been arrested over that invasion of the farm. Nobody has been arrested over the destruction of Spectre International Factory by goons hired by the same Gachagua. The state cannot purport to ban our activities on the grounds that it is protecting public property while at the same time sponsoring the destruction of property in another corner of the city. So this Demonstrations, as I've mentioned, are going to be peaceful demonstrations. Mr. Ruto, even today, has repeated that they are stand banned, that he's going to protect people's properties. We assure him there's going to be no destruction of people's properties. That is just an excuse. We assure Mr. Gachagua there will be no destruction of people's properties. Our people have been told to be peaceful. They're not even going to go to where people's places are. We're not going to markets. We're not going to shops. 
You say we are going to assemble at the Central Park in the city of Nairobi and march to the IBC headquarters and present a petition there. March to the office of the president along the Uru Highway and, and present a, a, a petition and also go to the treasury buildings. There are no businesses along those streets. So therefore, nobody should come up with the excuse that they are going to protect people's property tomorrow. They want to take this country to the dark days when people are not allowed to protest or to march. I invite them to see what is happening in France. Citizens have been demonstrating, buying tires on the streets in France, and they are protected by the police. They have been demonstrating in Europe, in, in, in Britain. They have been demonstrating in Israel. They have been demonstrating even in Japan. So we want to tell these people that Kenya fought very hard to bring this new constitution. We will ensure that the provisions of this constitution are protected. The civil rights of the people of Kenya must be respected by whoever is in regime, unless they want to impose a kind of a civilian dictatorship back on our people. Asante Nisan, end of the statement.